the importance of technology must advance freedom. And why KITDP as part of Purdue Research Foundation is on a mission to do just that with your help. Well, I want to talk about something you all have heard about, artificial intelligence. But I want to focus on one aspect of AI, and that's AI and our freedom. But first, AI is such an overused and abused word these days. I've got some uh, elementary school kids telling me, well, Professor Meng, you know, I'm doing AI as well. I say, well, really? Wow, you're pretty good. You should, uh, you know, apply to Purdue when you grow up. Say, yeah, see, I'm doing AI. I've just finished adding two numbers. I said, well, I'm not sure if all math qualifies as AI. But there is a lot of signals. There is a lot of hype, but there is also a lot of signals. For example, on the hype front, you have heard of Kasparov and Deep Blue, right? AlphaGo and Lee. The human and the machine. The machine got the AI and human got the human intelligent. Well, the AI eventually won. However, not a fair fight. Not a fair fight because the energy efficiency is four orders of magnitude different. You try to plug that machine to the wall with a tiny bit of voltage and see how many Jews it consumes is limited to the human brain, then you see that perhaps they won't be able to win the human race just yet. And then there is also the worry that, oh, the sky's going to fall. Well, remember, we had calculators. And instead of teaching how to add numbers fast, you teach how to translate real world problems into representations that involve calculation. Remember the web search. Oh, no, now everybody's going to cheat in classes. No, you learn how to search and how to cite properly. There's a lot of signals, however, behind the noise. And that's why at Purdue, the university, we are researching in AI, especially physical AI, where the bytes of AI meet the atoms of what we make, what we move, and what we uh, grow as a manufacturing, transportation, agricultural economy. We also teach AI, including two majors, one in philosophy. We teach with AI in a way that the faculty and the students can understand in a consistent manner. And we try to operate with AI's help on efficiency. But the bigger question is not what any university is looking at right now. The bigger question is, can AI make AI? Can AI stop AI? Can AI laugh and cry and dream like we can? Can AI self-contradict? Whether it is Walt Whitman or Montaigne, there's this notion that we are large, we contain multitudes and contradictions. Can AI be self-aware? And can AI suffer? the infinitely gentle, infinitely suffering things that we are. And is there only one AI, by the way? Where do you demarcate the beginning and the end of AI as a singular form? Now, is it just a matter of time that eventually, eventually, it's not just adding numbers, it's not just machine learning and neural networks. Truly, there will be intelligence emotion and existence. Well, maybe we'll get there. But we need some guardrails. We need, first of all, perhaps have guardrails on government access and government arbitration of what algorithms is permissible and what is not. We need to scrutinize the dependence of output on input to make sure that it's not just self-amplifying. On ChatGPT, you go out there and say, hey, these a, look really good, and B, sound familiar. Now, perhaps we human beings have made it too easy for the machines in large language models. We are so boring and predictable, no wonder the echo chamber produces something that looks pretty good. So we need to preserve that dissent despite inefficiency. And educational institutions are supposed to provide that environment to doubt, to debate, and to dissent. We need research on competing AI systems, 
among the big companies, but also by smaller players, by startup companies. And we need algorithms to break big data so that you have that on-off switch as an individual citizen. We need more options rather than more homogeneity. And here comes my biggest worry. I mentioned this at the commencement speech at the university a few months ago. 1948 is the year when George Orwell wrote 1984. And that's exactly three quarters of a century ago. This is the time for us to make sure that we do not, through the technology of AI, get sucked into the black hole of 1984's nightmarish vision and never be able to escape as free people ever again. Now, AI is not powerful without data and without the silicon. On the data front, I believe that what we need is something like Mota for data that is not an espresso drink. M-O-T-A, M stands for minimalism, that the way that you gather, store, use data must be kept to the minimum for the task at hand. For example, if I need to know, Dan, right, can I, as a vendor of a restaurant, sell alcoholic beverage to you? All I need to know is, are you above 21 or not? Binary answer. I don't need to know your actual age, let alone your birthday. Minimalism. O for optionality. We want to minimize the data part, but maximize choices, maximize optionality for you as an individual citizen or consumer to choose to opt out to the degree possible. T is for transparency that whatever level of minimalism and maximal optionality you are given, you need to know. You need to know where you are and where you are not. Finally, perhaps most importantly, is A for appeal. That any time, if you as an individual feels that, hey, my M or O or T are being violated, you can appeal, you can litigate the government, you can litigate the companies in an independent judiciary system with rule of law, not rule by law, in a system where there's check and balance of power. A simple test, just like there's the freedom of speech public square test. You go to a public square and you say, I think this government should go down, right? Try that right here in Washington, D.C., in front of the White House. I guess nothing would happen. People will look at you, some may even clap, and then they move on, and then you go home, right? Well, here's a test. How many times in a particular political system have individual citizens won litigations on AI, data, or any other topic against the government and large corporations. We need appeal on top of minimalism, optionality, transparency, what I call MOTA, MOTA for data. And that's coming back to this fundamental premise with greater gravity and urgency today than ever before, perhaps, in our lifetime, that technology must advance freedom. Freedom does not always win. Quite the contrary, usually it loses. And my worry to share with you in this depressing speech is that perhaps with technologies ranging from biomedical to artificial intelligence, if this time in the struggle between humanity and barbarity, between freedom, liberty, and tyranny, freedom were to lose, we may not come back ever again. Technology is born neutral, easily abused, 
to suppress freedom, and we have a mission together to ensure that technology must advance freedom. Freedom to choose, the preservation of free will, and maybe a data dome where we preserve MOTA. And that's why we are calling on you as KITDP to look at the Global Tax Security Commission and Global Trust Tech Network, to look at the certification and the standard, and specific to AI, AI training courses, and AI strategy center. If I could go back to this slide before I introduce to you on stage Senator Todd Young of the great state of Indiana and Keith to have their fireside, is this picture. This George Orwellian nightmarish vision remained by and large a fiction in the past 75 years. Our job is to ensure it will continue to be a fiction. To be a fiction in this country, to be a fiction as much as possible wherever there are human beings. Not only in the next 25 years, but we have the urgent task at hand. Not 2048, the centennial of the publication of 1984, but perhaps right around the corner behind New Year in 2024. We live in a grave moment with grim prospect. It's time to be sober. It's time to believe in the undying human spirit of freedom. It's time to ensure with MOTA protection of data that AI will not irreversibly lock in 1984. That is the task in front of all of us, all the freedom-loving people. Thank you very much.